Let's seek the kingdom of God, amen? Let's seek him so all his righteousness can be added unto us as living sacrifices as we glorify him in our worship here tonight. Can somebody just unmute your phone, your devices, just give God an amen, a, a loud praise of, of glory, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, God, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Good testimonies today. All, all the time. There's power in testimony mixed with the blood. Amen. All right. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. And the word of the Lord reads, brothers and sisters, think of what you were. Hold on, my son is hiccuping. Hold on, real quick, sorry. Sorry about that. You know what? Uh, before I finish that scripture, my son Trevor, he can hear you all. He can no longer walk and talk anymore. But I'm gonna, I'm just gonna shift the uh, the screen here so you can see my son. If you would, he's listening to every one of you. Can you just tell him hi? And Trevor, you tell him hi in the brain. Can he hear your voice? Amen. Thank you for doing that. I, I meant to uh, do that earlier um, because he's 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 right here with Daddy tonight, listening to Daddy's sermon with us all. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, he, I gave him a little bit of uh, liquid, so that that uh, took care of his hiccups. <laughs> all right. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty six, and the word of the Lord reads: Brothers and sisters. Think of what you were when you were called. Remember, Jesus didn't come to call the holy, but he came to call the sinner. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you here tonight for gathering us. And where we gather in your name in multiples, you are there outpoured upon us. Lord, we thank you that you would bless us in many ways. We're, we're feeling an uptick. We're feeling an, uh, 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 an up. Uh, an up in our spirit, feeling the, the glory coming out of, you know, much sickness and trial and tribulation. You're taking us into a new season. And here tonight, Lord, you put a message on my heart and I need Holy Spirit to uh, be with me, oh Lord, that I would speak as an oracle of your heart, that Lord, as this message would come forth, it would come from your heart and not mine. So I yield here tonight in the presence of my brothers and sisters. And I ask you, Lord, take full control of this vessel and bring forth an encouraging word here tonight that, Lord, as we worship you from the vantage of your word, as it blesses us, may we be a blessing to you, O Father God. May we be the apple of your righteous right eye here today. So, Lord, we simply just thank you and we ask you for your favor here tonight. Encourage us with your Holy Spirit. Take full control. Nothing that manifests here.
Tonight do we boast in the flesh, but Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Unmute your devices and just give God a great amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right, so before I share with you the sermon title, go ahead and, and get uh, right into Isaiah chapter 60. We're going to read that whole chapter here tonight and reflect in the spirit. Hallelujah. And while you get your place uh, there, Isaiah chapter 60, I'll go ahead and talk about tonight's sermon and the inspiration of it. And we'll get right into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight's sermon is titled, and I had to seek the Lord. I'm like, Lord, wow, you spoke this title into my spirit, but Lord, please make it encouraging so that I don't offend or in any way, shape or form, uh, uh, you know, bring anything that may have a thought. And I rebuke the devil in all his strategies. Like Pastor John up at Achito said earlier, he comes to deceive us, right? And that's for all of us. The word of God says that even the elect in these end times, even the elect are subjects to uh, 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 deception if we're not careful. But like the song would say as Joanne, my sister Joanne, who would sing so beautifully this song, reminds us that he's our counselor. So when we don't grieve Holy Spirit, hello, somebody, he's our mighty counselor and he guides us. He's our GPS. He is the one that helps navigate us through this crazy, perverted, perverse and wicked world that we live in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight's sermon, hear me, my brothers and sisters. This is what the Lord spoke into my spirit last night as I was preparing this sermon. Reservation to preservation, the greater glory. And we're gonna get into Isaiah chapter 60. And you know, I just wanna encourage us all. Sometimes what looks like something so um, strange in the natural, God is doing something in the supernatural. So reservation to preservation, the greater glory. So let me talk to you a little bit about the inspiration of tonight's message, but it came after learning about what God would speak into my spirit for tonight's title. And I believe I shared with you all at one point, I believe it was before we, we had uh, um, this new Zoom meeting login. And I believe I was talking about the voyage of our Savior, and I kind of took us on a long journey, right, to talk about the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in that, I think I mentioned to you all that there was a special scripture that the Lord placed on my heart at a night that I was so struck by grief and terror and concern. My son had fallen into the most uh, vicious uh, seizure that he's ever had. And I was really scared that night and I cried out to the Lord and the Lord would speak into my spirit and say, son, you need to grab your Bible and pierce it. And what he meant by pierce it was get your, get your thumb and randomly open up your Bible and what it lands on. I need to speak that into your spirit. And guess what? It landed on Isaiah 60. And Isaiah 60 came before our calling. But Isaiah 60 makes a lot more sense to me now that we're called to the indigenous lands in our ministry. And I just want to bless you here tonight with this read as we reflect in the spirit. Because much of the things that have happened in our lives, we, you know, the word of God says, like John Apachito said earlier, we go through trials and tribulations, right? But the word of the Lord, the promise of God says, Jesus, our Lord delivers us out of them all. We may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
We may be looking at a shadow of death, but our Lord is taking us through it. Can somebody say amen? So tonight, uh, I share this inspiration because as the Lord would speak into my spirit, the sermon title, he would also say Isaiah 60. So I knew that what God is doing in this new season. Recently, I posted on Facebook. Um, I woke up one morning and this is part of the inspiration as well. I woke up one morning and I heard the spirit of the Lord speak to me. The lion of Judah is roaring a great awakening. And it just melted my heart. It brought so much encouragement to my spirit, knowing that no matter what we go through, this pandemic, God has taken us to a new, into a new season of the next greater glory. Amen. And uh, so anyways, I believe that this scripture here tonight is going to bless us all and remind us all that you and I, we have a purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11, we have a purpose in our life and we're gonna fulfill that in the name of Jesus. Amen, hallelujah. All right. Well, uh, family and friends, let us go ahead and get right into the word of God. Trevor, you good, son? Yep, he's falling asleep on me already. I wonder what that means. <laughs> I better pick it up. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60, we're going to start at verse 1. We're going to read this chapter together. We're going to reflect in the spirit. Amen. And, you know, wherever God wants his praise break, we're going to give him the praise because he deserves all our praise. Amen. And in my uh, study Bible, the one that my daddy got me, he's got all my notes in this as I would read the word. It is subtitled, The Glory of Zion. Hallelujah. All right. Isaiah 60, uh, chapter, Isaiah chapter 60, starting at verse one. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Let us stop here real quick, my brothers and sisters. It was uh, almost three years ago. We're coming back from a Warrior Fest, Perry Stone Ministries uh, youth outreach. We're driving through uh, Gallup, New Mexico, where much of my family on my dad's side, my grandmother and my grandfather are from. And uh, as we would be driving through, my whole family is asleep, but I'm awake. I'm awake. Driving. I hope I'm not driving and sleeping. Amen. But the spirit of the Lord would fall upon me as I was driving it. And, and before we left on this, uh, coming back from Tennessee, the Lord spoke into my spirit. He said, son, you ain't listening to no music. You ain't listening to no music. And I didn't understand that. So, you know, we're driving and I'm not listening to any music. All of a sudden, I feel like never before encouraged to sing God a new song. And ever since then, I, I don't go a day where I don't sing to God a new song. It's really affect, it's impacted my life every day ever since that time. We're driving, hours go by, we're driving, we switch, right? My wife starts driving, I'm sleeping, and she's driving, and then we switch again, and then I'm driving. And then, as we're driving through Gallup, New Mexico, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and he delivered my calling. Now, mind you, prior to this, I was a part of, several different inner city ministries with homeless and men and women recovery homes where we would counsel the love of Christ and we would preach the love of Christ and have uh, events with them 
together in these ministries. And many times they, they were, uh, they meaning the men and women's recovery homes, ex-drug addicts, gang members, uh, those just coming out of prison, right? They would come into this program many times, a faith-based uh, Christian program, and that was our first ministry. I thought in my comfort, I was in my comfort zone. I had a really good job, probably the best paying job that I ever had before in my life. And everything just seemed so great. Man, I, you know, my wife didn't even have to work. She was doing a little side thing. Like God blessed us. And here we are doing ministry and it's comfortable. <laughs> I already see some hands going up. Oh, we ain't seen the praise break yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh yeah, we're building up here. Thank you, Jesus. I was comfortable in my walk. And I'm sure Pastor John Apachito could tell you that when you're comfortable in your walk, God's gonna stir some things up to get you out of your comfort zone because we get comfortable, a lot of times we get complacent. Okay, but I tell you, we're driving back and I'm, you know, I, life was just good. You know, my wife hadn't gotten sick at this time yet. Nothing like that. All of a sudden, the call from the Lord came down. The call from the Lord came down and said, son, I charge you. I charge you with helping to Pastor the love, hope, and trust of my son, Jesus Christ, on the indigenous lands of North America. I'm like, what? Really? Oh my gosh. Now, I tell you, there's so much excitement that comes when you are called. Yet there's so much uh, woe, like, how am I going to do this? Of course, anybody he calls out of their obedience, you know he's blessing you as long as you're obeying. But you have all these different thoughts coming into your mind. And I'm wondering, how are we going to do this? I, you know, what are we going to do? And But all of a sudden, the visions would come. The visions would come. Yes, the visions would come. Stars would be hitting the ground like he was going to penetrate. Now I know what the great awakening is. Amen. But he was going to penetrate the Gospels using the perceived last in line to take charge in these end times. My brothers and sisters, the very thing that Billy Graham prophesied the year that I was born in 1975, you and I are going to be able to witness this great awakening. Many of us are already seeing the forerunners, kind of like John the Baptist was the forerunner for Jesus Christ who then accelerated the Gospels in his ministry, right? So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the great forerunners, but then the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest in a great way. So I'm here to remind you, we're gonna arise together and we're gonna shine and we're gonna reflect on some things to help remind us and encourage us because we all have a purpose in this ministry of God. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. But here it is. I'm getting called. And I'm thinking, wow, Lord, I, I, I'm established in my career. I was just about to start taking classes for my master's degree in business. But guess what? He said, nope, son, I'm going to change some things around. And for the last uh, two and a half years, going on three years, April 11th, 2021 will be three years. He says, for the next three years, I'm going to prepare you for the calling. And he says, you ain't going to school. You ain't going to get that degree that you thought you're going to go get just to go out and make more money and all that stuff. He said, nope, I'm calling you to full-time ministry. And he says, you're going to go to school. Then I'm going to put you under the leadership that I want you to go through. And then here we are today. We have been going through the process of preparing according to the will of God. The Lord teaches us, right? Many are called, but few are chosen. And those who are chosen, they're chosen because even 
though they didn't want to. I know there are many times I questioned, but he chooses those who are faithful. And it, it chooses you and faithfulness in this regard is that you do what is right, not what makes your flesh feel good. Amen. So I'm encouraged here tonight to share this testimony with you, but interweave it with the power of the greater glory that we see here that is very prophetic for you and me in our apostolic ministry here today that we're called to. This scripture is very prophetic and is speaking into our hearts and spirit today in where we are chosen and led by the spirit to preach the gospels to the hurting. Amen. Hallelujah. Right there, just give God some glory. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for reminding me. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Verse four. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, your camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. I believe, brothers and sisters, you know, as we would be encouraged that God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That means he uses the simple people that are lowly in spirit, humble before the Lord. That even all the History that reminds us of how much we've been rocked. And look, when we got called, my wife, just a couple months after we were called, would have not just kidney failure, but she would have heart valve leakage in two of her valves. And I'm thinking, Lord, you just called us to a big ministry. I'm already going to ministerial school. And now, my wife is struck with sickness. My son has a disease that we've, we've battled with since he was six years old. Lord, how are we going to do this with my wife who was sick and now has to run on dialysis every other day? Oh my God, how much things we had to learn. But you know what? He spoke last year into my spirit as I was questioning him again. I'm a fallible human being. But like Job, I've learned that if I'm gonna if I'm gonna question God, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna even have my own doubts as a fallible human being, I'm gonna take them straight to the King of Glory, because He understands in my fallibility, in my weakness, that He will comfort me because I'm taking it to Him. I ain't going to man, I ain't going to a pastor, I ain't going to nobody. I'm not spreading no gossip. I'm taking it straight to the Lord. And he spoke something so encouraging into my heart. He said, son, I'm putting you through hell. I'm refining you in the fire because no one can ever doubt or refute or go against the calling that I have placed upon you and your family's lives. It is a supernatural testimony that bears witness in my seal of love for your testimony. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, I feel the outpouring of the Holy Spirit right now as I tell you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, I want to remind you, that's the God, that's the living God that we serve. And I'm here to remind you again, we have a purpose and we are doing everything we can to help perpetuate the kingdom of God. Amen. The Lord says, hey, you need to start uh, learning how to value the things in the unseen more than the things in the seen, in the natural. And that's what we're doing. We are maturing in Christ. Hallelujah. But I think it's so amazing how God is bringing a promise, a prophetic promise to the now, and even talks to us that in this scripture, 
that those who many people thought were last in line are going to help take charge in the coming days, in this great awakening. The Lion of Judah is roaring, and I feel that we're going to see some seams busting of the glory of God, bringing healing power, bringing healing power. And you, you hear about this all the time. Be the better person. Be the, We're going to see that, y'all, where the last in line are going to take charge and help as vessels, be the vessels for the Holy Spirit to be the healing power of unforgiveness that will rock the world in these end times. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that excites me. And I don't know about you, you cannot make this stuff up. What God ordains comes to pass. He ordains your steps and put everything that you need to accomplish what you are faithful in, in serving the Lord according to the calling that he has over your life. I hope and I trust and I pray that many of you, if you thought, oh man, I forgot about, I forgot about that calling God placed on He, I forgot about that vision. I pray that at minimum, we would not only dust that thing off, but we would serve the Lord according to his will and be excited for it. COVID-19 is not going to keep us, uh, back from serving the Lord. We're serving the Lord through this pandemic. It ain't gonna stop us. Look at the technology God has in, uh, given us to continue to perpetuate the word. And I'll be honest with you, I've seen more revival on this Zoom, uh, the Zoom worship that we have than some of the uh, church services with people in, in the presence of the assembly of God. God will move. Anywhere, we just need to take our brokenness to him and he'll bring the revival to our heart. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Verse seven. All Keter's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebeth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar. Of course, we know now Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. We no longer have to give a, 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 a an animal offering to the Lord because Jesus already paid the price, his precious blood. So we got to make sure that we understand in proper context here, right, what we're dealing with. But now Jesus represents that sacrifice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I will adorn my glorious temple. And the word of God reminds us, right? Especially in the New Testament, the temple now is our Lord. Hallelujah. And there'll be a day that we get to ascend in his glory where our soul will ascend into the glory of eternal life and we'll have there waiting for us mansions and our dwelling place not made with human hands. Hallelujah. That excites me, y'all. Verse eight, who are these that fly along the clouds like doves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me in the lead are the ships of Tarshish, bringing your children from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Verse 10, foreigners, will rebuild your walls and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you in favor, I will show you compassion. I want to stop and reflect here. This is a very, uh, an amazing promise of God. Even the word of God says that, hey, those who have sinned against the God-fearing, God will humble them in his own timing. And I've seen this dozens of times, even in my own walk, where a sinner would sin against you or do something wrong against you. But because you now fear the Lord and you treated that person compassionate, 
You know, Jesus says, hey, you're going to be afflicted like me. You're going to be falsely accused like me. But endure it for my name's sake. What's that mean? Be compassion even towards the evildoer doing bad things to us. We, we tend to lose that teaching sometimes. But how beautiful it is that when we hold on to the covenant and we listen to the Lord and we, we, we don't just talk the teachings of Jesus, but we walk the teachings of Jesus. We carry it out. He says, I know my true disciples when they follow my teaching and demonstrate my teaching. So if we don't do that, we're hypocrites and we're not demonstrating to the Lord that we truly love him. But how blessed it is that God would take that sinner, humble him in his own time to apologize back to you. And in this case, it's a prophetic word here that they will even help to rebuild your walls, rebuild things. Tonight's message, reservation to preservation. We may have been reserved in the sight of man, but in the sight of the Lord, we have been preserved because what it looks like in the physical is not, not necessarily what's happening in the spiritual. And in this message, we get to uh, be filled with joy knowing that the greater glory is outpoured upon us in the, with the spirit of the Lord, because when Jesus went to go be with the father, he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It didn't mean only to uh, the Jews who at one point in time, God used as the chosen people. He had to use somebody. It just means now that anybody and everybody who calls on the name of Jesus, Gentile or Jew, you will be saved. Hallelujah. That, that means us. Now, I don't know about you. I'm a mutt. I got all kinds of blood flowing through my veins. From European to Native American and everything in between. I mean, it's, it's crazy. But I know that it don't matter what kind of blood is flowing through my veins. It don't matter the tone color of my skin. God loves me. God loves me and created me and he's created you in his image. Hallelujah. Verse 11, your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night so that people may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. We ought not really put too much thought into things like that, but I tell you, this is where the Lord's avenging hands and his righteousness supersedes anything that we could think. We may sometimes think thoughts that are not right, but we gotta be reminded that responsibility is the Lord's. We shall not condemn any flesh. And I see that a lot right now. So to Pastor John Apachito's point earlier, deception is real. There is a lot of people condemning flesh and have no business doing it. But it's the Lord's work to reconcile that. It's his job to do that, not for us. I will never pray. I will never pray. And this rocked me to the core recently. I, I feel led by the Holy Spirit to share with you. I had an apostle friend of mine in Texas share with me a video of a pastor, a well-known pastor in his congregation praying curses upon a certain political group. Don't have, we don't need to get into political uh, groups and affiliation, nothing like that. But he was condemning the flesh. And he was calling upon curses in the name of Jesus. That ain't our job, y'all. That is not our job. And we ought not ever do that. I don't care if you are a minister who's been ministering to your church for 30 years. Even Jesus says they're going to come in sheep's clothing. They're going to be ravenous wolves in the heart. False prophets are going to, and we see that. We see that everywhere. 
Yeah, all you got to do is turn on your YouTube channel and you will see so many backpedaling false prophets. Don't listen to it. And if you don't understand what's going on, just listen to God. Just get in your word and you one on one with Jesus. And don't listen to all that stuff. Because it will, it has the potential to reel you in and to deceive you. You have a purpose in this life. Don't let the enemy do that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 12, for the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. 13, the glory of Lebanon will come to you. The juniper, the fir, the cypress together to adorn my sanctuary. I don't know about you, but man, that sounds beautiful. A sanctuary holy and pleasing unto the Lord where we can sing unto him. And I will glorify the place for my feet. Hallelujah. Give God some praise right now. Just unmute your devices and give him a great shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 14, the children of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Can I just share something with you real quick? As I mentioned earlier, when we got called, I, I had, you know, the word of God says this. He says, you know, human beings, they, us as mere mortals, we, we plan things, but God guides and directs our steps. In other words, we may think in our own carnal mind, this is what we're going to do. But really, God has the final say in the steps of your walk. Yeah, he may put you through the wilderness for a little while to humble you to get you back in, in, in reach with him. And like Apachito said today that thousands of angels were rejoicing when our sister gave her life back to Christ. I mean, that's beautiful. He left the one, he, he, or I'm sorry, he left the 99 to go get that one who wandered off. And when that one sheep comes back to the Lord, hallelujah, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. On earth as it is in heaven. And I don't know about you, but the more I get deeper in the relationship with my Lord, I see the heavens split open in my, in my spirit, in my, in my, in my mind. I, I see that. And many times I'm there, right there praising the Lord in faith and in spirit as the angels are rejoicing because there's no better feeling then when you lay hands on someone and usher them into the presence of the Lord where they start to change and, and just develop that relationship with Jesus. But I'm just here to tell you, you know, I, I thought I was going to do other things. And when God called me to this apostolic ministry, you know, here's my thought. I used to want to live in a particular area. I used to have my own idea of what life was going to be. I was saved. I'm comfortable in the inner city ministries that God has called us to. Uh, I've seen many miracles, but I was comfortable. He said, nope, I got to take that high paying job from you. He said, nope, you ain't going to school. You're going you're gonna to go to school for ministry. And I'm thinking, well, you just took the high paying job from me. I got laid off and I was inches away of being homeless myself. And God says, you go preach to the homeless now. And you tell them how close you are to homelessness. This is a true story. I feel the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon my flesh right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you go preach to the homeless and you let them know just how close you are to being homeless. And of course, I had to be obedient. Got my family together. We went out to the streets. We served them food, what we had. And then we, we asked anybody who wanted prayer, come on in. I'm going to pray whatever the Holy Spirit gives me. Or if you have anything that you want to humble yourself, ask for prayer. After that, he gave me a new job. He gave me a new job. 
had been uh, unemployed for like three months. Everything in our savings was just about depleted, gone. But I want to tell you something. There is, we, we, these last two and a half years, we've done a lot of groundwork, boots on the ground, events, and also just evangelizing the streets in Camp Verde, Arizona with the Yavapai Apache Nation. In 2019, we were able to bring a Christmas event that blessed the, the church. And one of, the, one of my sisters who were on the lands, that I've, she's got her own ministry. She said, Pastor Kevin, you know, I've never seen my people. She said this, I never seen my people come to an altar call. And she says, we've had many people preaching out here. Never once have my people come to the altar call. And she said, this is the first time we had people weeping, not we. The Lord had people weeping before his presence. We were only vessels. We had a, we had a play that my son was involved with and, and even I was involved with it. But then the message, and the Lord took over my words and it spoke into the spirit and heart of every child, mother, father, in that, in that, uh, in that uh, 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 rec center, the, rec the Tun Lee Recreational Center, we saw probably over 60 people come in their brokenness before the Lord. It was a great, great moment that the Lord got all the glory. But I want to tell you something. I no longer have, when God, when God gave that calling to us, we no longer have the desire to live in the inner city. I believe that here real soon, God is going to be moving us either in the reservation or right by the reservation. I want to let you know, though, every time that I touch my feet on native soil, it is sacred, it is beautiful, it is amazing. Because you know what God spoke into my spirit? He told me when I was called, the soil is rich. The soil is rich. And you know, I realize God has already manifested over the years and is already preparing he said, the, the uh, harvest is plentiful, but you need to ask for workers because we got so much harvest, it's going to be ready. So you and I, woo, we get to be encouraged that we have a purpose to this calling and the soil is rich. Hallelujah. Verse 15, although you have been forsaken and hated. Oh, you know what that feels like, right? You know what it feels like to be hated. I know I do. I was once a, uh, I am a product of special education, which means when I was young, in the first grade, I had to go to special education courses. And when you go to a segregated classroom, you become the target of bullying. You become the target of people making fun of you because you can't learn as fast as them. I mean, it's really a, a, a sad thing to see people who are picked on and, 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 and bullied because of these, uh, I don't know, call it a handicap, but I tell you what, I thank God that he took that weakness of mine and he's now made it a strength. Hallelujah. I get paid for the very thing that I once was weak in and could not understand what I read. And my comprehension was very low. I was way behind. But then he made it my strength. All glory to God. Although you have been forsaken and hated with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all generations. Let this sink. Those who have ears, you hear what the Spirit says. Amen. Verse 16, you will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Thank you, Jesus. Instead of bronze, 
I will bring you gold and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. This particular aspect, I'm feeling in the spirit that yes, although there is a past and although that past tends to have generational curses, I know that in my family, you know, from, from, from pornography to uh, different types of music, the things that were even a generational curse to my father because his father passed it down. This generational curse stuff, y'all, it is real. I'm a living testimony, but I thank God he would break them chains. I thank God that in the spirit, like the song says, I hear them chains falling. He spoke into my spirit one time. You need to start saying you're delivered. He had me speaking that thing as he was dealing with me. And although there's a lot of healing that needs to take place, how beautiful it is to know that no matter the past, God is raising up a remnant and he's going to increase his remnant. But those last, the perceived last things in line are going to take charge. The very people who had their land stolen. <clears throat> All of this is going to be recovered. In the spirit, we are not in reservations. We're not uh, reserved and segregated. In the spirit, God is preserving a remnant that is going to help take charge, that is going to radiate his love in these end times. I call that in the spirit a blessing. But these generational curses, you and I are going to watch those chains break in the name of Jesus. We're going to have more people like my sister Joanne, who, who just recently gave her life to Christ. She's going to start speaking an authority in her house. Devil, get out. You have no place in here. Get off my children in the name of Jesus. Anoint uh, her house with oil. And these things that give us the spiritual discipline, but the spiritual authority to cast that thing out. And then we see the upbringing of our children getting it sooner than we got it. And not the way that some people try to come into the land and try to preach Jesus. They didn't carry it out according to the will of God. They were hypocrites in many cases. I'm talking about the real deal, y'all. God is going to start using us to speak spiritual authority, to watch the demons flee and watch redemption increase and the healing power of Holy Spirit of unforgiveness be healed. Get excited, y'all. Verse 17, or I'm sorry, verse 18. Uh, no longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. But you will call your wall salvation and your gates praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what? I just feel, yeah, get them hand. Come on, give them a, let's take a praise break real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Just unmute your devices. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to encourage you. God knows our true heart of worship. And whether I praise God like this or praise God like this, he knows my heart. Who is anybody to judge how I worship him? They don't know the cost and the price I paid to get where I am today by his redemptive blood. Not anybody knows what I've been through, but him alone. So when I give him praise and I give him glory, I do it from a sincere place in my heart, thanking him what he's brought me out of. Amen. Amen. So if it looks funny to somebody, I don't care because I know I'm pleasing my Lord. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 19. 
The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. I don't know about you, when I, when I was a kid, I used to be terrified, probably because I watched so many scary movies. But I used to be terrified to walk down the hall to get to my room. I thank God that when he saved me, ain't nothing scaring me. Ain't nothing scaring me. I fear the Lord and the Lord only. I, I take one exception to that. I got to be honest. <clears throat> I've always had a fear of being eaten alive. I'm not going to lie. But I tell you, when I got saved, I feared nothing. Fear nothing but the Lord and have nothing but peace in my heart knowing that he is with me. So now I can walk down a dark hall, a dark street. I may evangelize even at night. Gangsters, I don't have a gun on me. I don't pack a knife, nothing. I've got the spirit of the Lord. You got the spirit of the Lord. And I could walk in the street knowing that he is my light. He's my light. Amen. If it's dark outside, he's my light in the spirit. Hallelujah. He illuminates my path. Glory to God. He ain't going to let me stumble. He ain't going to let you stumble. We're his children. Amen. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Your sun will never set again and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will end. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Weeping may endure for the night, but his renewed glory comes in the morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Then all your people will be righteous and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands for the display of my splendor. Thank you, Jesus. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord in its time. It didn't say when exactly, but it says here in its time, when it's his time. Jesus even said, no one knows the, the day nor the hour, not even the son of man, only the father in heaven. In its time, I will do this swiftly. And I believe the roaring lion of Judah that we hear in our spirit <laughs> is telling us how close this time is getting to a great, great glory of God through the great awakening Hallelujah. And you know, I want to encourage you with something. The more that I learn, because God has had me, he's had me learn some things. He's given me an appetite to learn. And he's, he points me right to the direction of the things that I need to learn. And that's the mighty counselor that our sister Joanne was singing about. He's our mighty counselor. He will guide us if we listen to him. But we have to listen. But he will even show us what we need to learn, what we need to be taught on. Even Jesus said that when I go to be with the Father, when I outpour my spirit, it will be the Holy Spirit that teaches you all things and reminds you of everything that I have taught you that you need to know. Of course, he was speaking to his disciples then, but you and I are his disciples now. Hallelujah. We're his disciples now. Amen. That word is prophetic, it's alive, it's active. It's active in our life right now and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. But I just wanna encourage you that we have been preserved such a time as this. No sickness has been able to call, uh, come upon his chosen. Yeah, it may have looked like in the physical, man, how are we ever gonna recover from this? Here it is now. Uh, Four, three, 200, 100 years to now, we see God preserving us. We see God about to uh, prepare us for something so great for his glory. And it will be a blessing 
for the common good of all mankind. And I think that is just amazing. No smallpox, no swine, uh, flu, none of these sicknesses was it so uh, bad that God did not preserve a remnant that he would, to, he would grow. And now we're seeing that us, we are preserved. We're not reserved. We are preserved for his glory. And the greater glory is about to fall. And we're going to operate and we're going to walk in his glory because we're going to do according to his will in this time. We're going to be reminded of our calling. As Habakkuk 2.22, I believe, says, when you have that vision, the Lord says, write it down and make it plain. I want to encourage you to hold yourself accountable to the vision and the calling that God has placed in your heart. And don't let no man deceive you, no woman deceive you, no spirit of Jezebel, no spirit of uh, temptation. There's nothing that you and I will go through from this day forward when we have the living Christ living in us that he won't get us out of. We just got to humble ourselves and in our weakness cry, even in our burning, even in our flesh's burning desire. There's a great glory that falls that when we operate in faith, fall on our knees and say, Lord, I want to do something that I know I'm not supposed to do. But Lord, will you please take my mind off of that? Because it's it's just constantly on my mind. And then his glory will fall. But that's where Apostle Paul would say the thorn in the flesh serves a purpose. He may not take that thing out completely. Does not mean that you're not delivered. Oh yes, the spirit of the Lord fall upon you. You've been delivered of many things, but it does not mean that you're not gonna be continuously tempted to do something that you're not supposed to do. Doesn't mean that you're not gonna be tempted of a addiction that he broke. But when that temptation comes, we can't just live on bread alone, but on the word of God. And we got to get with the Lord and say, Lord, I need you right now because I'm burning. But his glory will come down and will encourage us. I can't tell you how many nights I, I've, even as a minister, fallen asleep in my burning, but somehow he gets me to sleep in peaceful sleep. And I'll wake up and I'll say, Lord, thank you for keeping me from sinning because I so badly wanted to indulge in my flesh like I used to, like a pagan. Thank you, Lord, for tucking me in tonight that, that, Lord, when I cried out, you heard me, right? When I cried out, and you comforted me. When I cried out, I woke up feeling refreshed, thanking you that I did not sin against you again. Thank you, Jesus. But he has a plan and a purpose for us. He has a plan and a purpose for us. And we need to be focused. Write your vision down Hold yourself accountable in his presence. Share it with people. One of the first things when God called us, he had me publicly put that out there. Because I didn't, I wasn't on social media, wasn't, had website, none of those things. We got him now only because he told us, you got to get it out there because I'm going to hold you accountable. See, you write it down, then other people can encourage you in your calling too. And they'll hold you accountable. But it's a good accountability. Amen. We want the character of God to befall us. One of his greatest characters, is his word is his bond. Anything that he speaks, anything that he says that he's going to do, he does it. And that's the character that he wants us to adopt as well. Be accountable. It's exciting times, y'all. I know that we're still facing this pandemic. I saw Jonathan Nez just recently uh, talking about updates and the 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 um, the numbers are going down on the Navajo Nation. I thank God for that. We want to continue to be diligent, but realize there's going to come a time where we have to arise and shine because His glory is upon us. And when that time comes, we're going to be ready, y'all. We're going to be ready. We're going to be boots on the ground. We're going to go out there running, and we're going to have be hungry for lost souls. The right way, God's authentic way, the gospel way, not the prosperity of money way, but the, the charity and the love of Christ for community service. We're going to reach souls. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I really wanted to stress the point 
of the Lion of Judah and is roaring because I feel it in the spirit and I pray you feel it in the spirit. And it's crazy how those who have like-minded callings, how it all lines up. It all lines up. You didn't know it before, yet God shocks you and you learn about this apostle or this pastor or this uh, evangelist. And it's like, wow, God, you are, you're ordaining every step. You're putting the, the, the steps in place your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But real quick, Isaiah 60, 14, I wanna impress that upon our spirit. Father God, give us ears to hear what the spirit says. Listen to this one more time. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 14. The children of your oppressors, oppressors, those who violated you in the past. Listen to this. The children of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Now, physically, if anybody ever tried to bow down at my feet, I'd have to tell them, I am not worthy of you bowing down at my feet. But here's what I want to speak into your spirit. God is saying that those who have oppressed our people, their children, maybe not the violators themselves, but it's saying that the promise here that their children will reconcile back to you, to me. And this is something that you may struggle with. I know I do sometimes trying to wrap my head around the vastness, the greatness, the goodness of God. And it's, we will never understand completely his glory. As the word of God would remind us, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. But how beautiful it is that he would give us a nugget in the spirit, bring revelation to us in the spirit, like the great awakening that has been prophesied since 1975. And since then, I'm sure many of you can bear witness to the forerunners who have been preparing the way for the gospels to be penetrated in such an amazing way that will bring reconciliation to the four corners of the world. I find that fascinating. And although it is hard to believe, it is the promise of God. And we just gotta have faith, hold on to that, be encouraged by that. Know that you and I, we have a purpose, hallelujah. Uh, why don't we go ahead and pray out for this word. I thank you all for trusting in me to bring forth the message. I believe <laughs> sometimes, you know, the Lord builds upon the message as you go because he wants you to lean on his Holy Spirit, be sensitive to his Holy Spirit and not just preach something that is scripted. And I thank God that he takes over. <laughs> I thank God he takes over at times. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let us pray out. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you gave us the bread of life here tonight. You've reminded us, Lord, of the great awakening. You've reminded us of the great glory that is about to befall, which has already been befalling on your people, on me and others, Lord. Keep us fervent towards the calling, Lord. It may look like there was reservation, but Lord, you have spoken to our spirit that you've been preserving us at a time such as this and that your greater glory is about to fall. Lord, we anticipate a great move of your Holy Spirit, bringing healing to our lands, to our people, and to the world at large. Oh, we're going out. We're not going out without a fight. We are standing firm, Lord, as the book of Ephesians would say, that we are equipped with the full armor of God. We thank you, Lord. And I don't know why, but Lord, I just feel impressed upon my spirit, a special anointing upon your daughter, who just recently gave her life to the Lord. Lord, we pray that, Father, you would equip her, give her the spiritual boldness that she needs to speak spiritual authority 
and be an encouragement to her family, her children, and to her loved ones around her. Lord, may your radiant light glow from within her, demonstrating your love and favor in her that would draw others, Lord, to be interested in your greater glory. But Father, as we close out the message here tonight, we just want to thank you. We want to give you all the praise. We felt your Holy Spirit so many times here tonight outpoured upon me and I pray and I believe outpoured upon all the flesh on this Zoom meeting here tonight and even the live stream on Facebook, Lord. But we, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the glory and we just thank you again and we thank you again and we thank you again. We love you, Lord. Keep us connected with you. Keep us tied to you. Don't let us go, oh God. And when we're knuckleheads, bring us back quickly, quickly. And that we together will stand by one another together, help one another together. That when we fall, they'll be there to uh, help us lend a hand, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Thank you for saving a wretch like me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.